Right then, my friends, we're back inside the building. Just gone at four minutes past nine here on Trickstar Radio. As always, we're thrilled to be back inside the building. It's Bank Holiday Monday, and we have a treat for you this morning. We're on the line with one of the most exciting uh, people currently working in and around UK hip-hop, one of the most individual and unique-sounding talents out there right about now, someone we've been supporting heavily on The Breakfast Show. True Mendes joins us. How are you doing? Huh? I'm good, man. How are you this morning? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. It's great to get you on the line. I've been looking forward to this one. Obviously, we've been we've been running bits off the album um, as the singles have dropped, and it's it's been it's been great to listen to. So, just in general, it's great to get you on. Um, I appreciate it, man. Each each and every man. So, we, we're going to run through a couple of bits today. We're going to run through obviously the sort of process behind the album um, and putting it together. Obviously, the response to it as well. But just in mm-hmm. general, um, I'd, I'd like to get a bit of background on yourself purely because you have such a unique kind of take. Um, on UK hip hop, there's a lot of kind of theatrics involved in the kind of like in the kind of vocal maneuvers you do. The general approach yeah. is so energetic. Like, talk to me about how you first kind of got involved and the influences behind what you were doing. Yeah, to be fair, funnily enough, it's more so R and B that's been to the forefront of what I listen to. Um, and to be honest, um, I just appreciate abnormality. Um, I appreciate different approaches to music, whether it be, you know, subject matters, production, flow patterns. I, I just like a challenge. And I, I'm, I, I'm a fan of people that step outside the, the box and outside the comfort zone when it comes to writing music. So for me, even in the early stages, you know, this is when everyone was kind of doing grime. I never did really did grime. I would get, I, I appreciate slower tempo beats as well. But just in the way I'd... Um, articulate myself over it and deliver it it wasn't like a one two one two one two one two do you know what i mean so it's like but even with certain people that listen to tracks even up to now because a lot of my patterns as well aren't in a cliche stereotypical method or rhythm it's like oh that wasn't really rhyme did it but it did but it was just on a different line so more so it's just the abnormality that i've always appreciated but it's um it's more so um r&b followed by hip-hop that um i gravitate towards but there's a lot of artists as well that i took from like i really loved biggie um i like talib kwale papoos there's a lot of rappers out there that i've, I've gained you know a bit of um an insight from and i appreciate what they do um andre 3000 is probably my most favorite out of everybody alongside lauren hill as well more based on um just going against the grain and not being, you know, afraid to take an alternative, um, more more detailed approach to how they want to deliver something, and they're not being cliched or in 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 the times, and you know, what I mean, just jumping on the bad wagon of what everyone else is saying and stuff. So, yeah, it's more so the abnormality factor I like, and just detailed detailed lyricists and just coming out your comfort zone, really, and you know, the rest kind of just built itself. To be fair, a hundred percent. No, it, it's so interesting to hear, kind of listening through that because of just how. Yeah. Well, I remember when you when we first started hearing tracks from yourself, sort of. Like in circulation and it was such a yeah. it was such a refreshing thing to hear because you as you said you are very very good at kind of steering away from the sort of typical yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose and steering down to, down a, a much more unorthodox but almost ear opening mm-hmm. approach um, to, mm-hmm. to rap in this country and obviously something that I've noticed throughout the course of this album we'll talk about the kind of reaction to the album as we go forward but the kind of beat yeah, selection yeah. Um, you spoke there about um, liking sort of slower tempo instrumentals but I feel this album goes absolutely everywhere in, in the sort of instrumentals you're using yeah 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 so with this one obviously i've put out like about six seven projects prior to this one so like a mixtape and then a bunch of eps and for that album obviously i need to differentiate this project from everything i've already done so for me one of the main things that i pushed to the forefront was the versatility of it so versatility is always being the production and beats that i was getting the subject matters that i'm talking about how i execute it i want to do stuff that i haven't done on previous projects so it's kind of an all-inclusive body of work that someone somewhere can take something from complete different sets of people can always take something from at least one song on the project so it was deliberately and tactically done so that it danced across different um, production on different tempos, different instrumentals, different instruments. Do you know what I mean? So it was just more of an um, definitely planned, um, and it's more so just to differentiate from differentiate it from pe- previous work that I've already done. And also, as I said again, just to challenge myself because I think with music as well, I enjoy doing music, but I have a love hate relationship with music and. 
I need to keep myself um, on on the edge. So I need to find ways to to to, to push myself. Um, so if I'm constantly doing like the same genre or the same tempo over and over again, I know how to do this. So I don't find it fun anymore. Yeah, that makes um, sense. And it, yeah, yeah, just to step out my comfort zone and just to see what I can create as well. Do you know what I mean? You don't know if you're gonna like it until you create it. So it's also me just you know banging my head against the wall trying to figure out something new as well. Like I'm not afraid to be the first one to try something different. Do you know what I mean? If it works, it works. If it don't, it don't. But at least I can say I tried it so yeah it was definitely you know intentionally done awesome so, yeah man yeah, well, I mean it's such an interesting track listing when you do kind of sit through it and obviously the title yeah. Misdiagnosis of Siobhan Johnson it's 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 an interesting title the artwork's quite interesting as well like how, <laughs> how, how much kind yeah. of work went into that um, that the kind of imagery behind it or was it just kind of like a, a, an on the spot kind of decision yeah so everything's like you know I pre pre thought out in my head with the title is to the so the first thing is it, it just pays homage to the miseducation of Lauren Hill um uh-huh, as one, one of sense. my yeah, yeah, yeah as one yeah, of my yeah. favorite albums and then it spins with um as much as I love music it's also going to be the thing more time that makes me lose my sanity so that's why even in videos and stuff when you see me playing that character when you know like when I'm in the hospital gal and I'm just doing a bit of a madness like it's kind of like me labeling myself as crazy before everyone else does and it also being me labeling myself as crazy you know when certain people step outside the box and start doing things that start talking about certain topics that people shouldn't be talking about or conspiracy theories or just bare different things that people start doing and automatically you're labeled crazy if it's not the norm it's kind of me foreseeing the end of my journey with music I'm not sure how it's going to go but it's kind of me just I know as much as I enjoy music it'll also be the thing that causes me to to lose my sanity long term so it's kind of me just labelling myself that before anyone else does um, but yeah, that's kind of the double meaning. It's like the love hate relationship I do have with music, Amazing. Um, and just the, the the force, the force to to keep going. And be, oh, you should carry on, don't stop. Blah, blah, blah. And it's like sometimes you do have the, the thoughts of you know what, I can't be I can't be bothered with this anymore. So it, it's also like the the, the the force element of it to, to continue pursuing it. So yeah, it's one of them ones. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it, again, it is so interesting to obviously as a fan yeah. at this point, kind of listening through the process. It's, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, it's crazy to hear, and obviously with the album itself, it is uh, it's a it's a longer project it is it is a much more kind yeah. of um, extensive kind of filled out project 17 tracks in total yeah, did yeah, you yeah, yeah. originally because obviously you've spoken a lot about it being very kind of pre-planned like you had the plan for how you wanted to do it was it always 17 tracks or were there a couple that snuck on at the end Mm, to be fair, I knew I wanted a bulky album. I was always going between 50 and 17. And so obviously when I was just writing the tracks, it kind of just came. I, I think I passed the 15 mark. And I have a thing with odd numbers where I always want it to be an odd number on, on my project. So yeah, 17 just kind of won really. I think I was on track like the end of 15 and I already had a concept for a 16th track. So I was like, okay, let's just do 17. Then. And it just felt right as well. And it's like, they're, they're also, a lot of them are also like lengthy songs. So it's 17 tracks and there's a few that are like 10 minutes or like seven minutes. So it's proper bulky, beefy body of work. So yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. I think, I think the really interesting thing about this as well, having listened through it is the, it, it, it is a real journey of a project. As you said, the instrument, yeah, yeah. The, the kind of choice of beats you're using do kind yeah. of, kind of drag people in different directions. Obviously you've got the, the, the different kind of elements on there. You've got, again, the theatrics involved in the project as well. Um, like yeah, yeah, yeah. again, during the production process of it, um, did you did you kind of foresee it coming out the way it has done? Like, is is it like a perfect ren- uh, like render of how you saw it coming? What the whole project? The whole project, yeah. Um, that's an interesting question. I don't know how I foresaw the, the end result of it. I just knew what I wanted included within that, and because my mind changes all the time, and I've been sitting on this album like a good few like five months now. That it's been complete. Um, when I listen to it now. There are certain things I would have changed, but at the time when I was creating it, it was perfect. You see what I'm saying? So it, it's one of them ones really. Like when I listen, every time I go ahead and create a body of work and then I leave it and I go do something else and I re listen to it, there's always going to be things that are, oh, I could have done this, but I could have. But that's also because I'm improving as I continue life. Um, but at that moment in time when I was creating it and due to the resources I had, the beats I had, the features I had, everything I could have done, I did. So how it turned out is the best I could have got it at that period of time. So, yeah. 
Yeah, amazing. Okay, yeah. yeah, wicked. <laughs> okay, cool. So what we're going to do, uh, it, it, again, the process is so interesting to listen through. Um, we, we, we're going to get into uh, a track off the album next. Now, this one um, mm-hmm. does happen to be our brand new Trickstar Radio track of the week, as voted for on the Fresh Friday show. So um, first of all, congratulations. It's a ridiculously prestigious honour. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, talk me through this tune, Mood Ring, possibly the most abstract um, tune on there in, in the way it's been put together. And it's such a fun tune to listen through talk to me about how it came together yeah yeah to be fair me and um my, my guy from birmingham my engineer my producer from birmingham we just wanted um something that was different from everything else on the project so we just got something a bit more crossover sounding some has a bit of funky a bit of dance element to it um and yeah we kind of just um started working on something from scratch and then just concept wise i didn't want it to be too complicated to understand or to be able to sing along to um i wanted to have a nice groove and nice little melody to it and obviously he had to match that production wise so we're just going back and forth back and forth with ideas and i just thought you know adding elements of humor into it as well is always a plus you know people like things they can sing to and people also like things they can laugh to so i thought let me just try and combine the two elements and see what we come up with so then mood ring the concept of moving came along where it's just like being unpredictable in a relationship like owning your sporadic mm, a love-hate relationship with someone um and yeah i can do you wrong or right depending on my mood swings so it's like could be the weather could pee me off it could be something you said last week that i just remembered yeah you know i mean but it's something everyone can relate to but i just thought it was quite funny to just go off that as a, as a kind of a concept and then yeah we just added some funk elements to it, a little bit of hip-hop to it but it's still got that like commercial poppy dancey kind of feel to it as well and we just thought you know what it's kind of sick still I know it's not for like the diehard boom bap heads or you know what I mean those that only love like old school hip hop but again it's just to showcase versatility again like I'm not a one trick pony and I'm happy to just dance across different genres and styles so I thought you know what this is sick on a bigger scale so let's just create a shot a video for it and then boom yeah that's out <laughs> A hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, it's a wicked tune and it's definitely a tune that we're going to be running for a long period of time down here on The Breakfast oh, Show. It, it, I it's appreciate just, it, Mum. Anytime. It's just got such a, such a good energy about it and I feel it does, um, it, it, as you said, it showcases the versatility of you as an artist and that's why it was voted for as Track of the Week. So we're going to get into this one right yeah, about yeah, yeah. now. Uh, it's just gone. 16 minutes past nine here on Trick Start Radio. You're locked into Breakfast with Kovu. We're live on the line with Tremendous this morning as we jump into our brand new Track of the Week. This one goes by the name of Moodring. Keep it locked. Track of the week. This is Breakfast with Kovu, bringing you their morning flavors on Trickstar Radio. Trickstar Radio.